Well, let me ask you, Justin. You passed her. How long have you been past her? 15 years. Yes. <laughs> that threw me off for a second. I knew yeah. it had been a while with that. Okay, so for 15 years. So, and I obviously you count to a lot of people. Now, I I just heard, you know, y'all might have to correct me. I forget that the millennials started in 1983. Yeah. And Generation Z starts at 1995. So y'all all Generation Z. So, and, so I want... For those that are Generation Z, those, these, what, 23, getting younger, what do you find that they're coming to you more about than anything else when it comes to advice? And I want to throw in here, I read a statistic that said from 15 to 24 year olds, the highest rate of suicide in this country ever. Yeah. 15 to 24 year olds. And there's a lot of questions as to why this happened, social media, all these other things. But what are you finding people are coming to you when they are coming to you? Yeah, um, well I guess to the, some of the reasons for those high rates of depression, those high rates of suicide with that demographic, so much of it has to do with um, the inability to actually be, uh, to be able to disconnect from the constant feeling of judgment or um, constant feeling of having to measure up to these uh, new definitions of what like self-identity is supposed to be. So, you know, one of the things that I think modern culture very much wants us to believe is that um, your freest self is um, completely undefined. Uh, go out into the world and discover who you are and those kinds of things. And so don't allow any kind of influences to shape you. And in, in one sense, that can feel very liberating. Um, in another sense, uh, it's actually debilitating to not have any sense of like guidance mm -hmm. or where you're supposed to go in life. And so when you're constantly feeling that pressure of having to like look within, discover yourself, if you don't find it or you don't discover what you think you should be discovering, um, it's actually a really depressing place to be. So I think one of the really interesting things about just this new um, this new uh, generation that's disconnected itself in a lot of ways from any kind of transcendent influence on their life. I don't, you know, I think for some that would be disconnecting from church, from religion, from all those kinds of things. But even just uh, having this sense of identity that's rooted in something outside of ourselves, like having a sense of like corporateness and having a sense of like community, um, that's probably one of the biggest losses to this newer generation is just that sense of like community that's not dependent on me performing, uh, performing well. And uh, it's, an, it's an exhausting way to live. You never feel like you can rest or find yourself um, in a community that accepts you for who you are. It's interesting you put the truth because I'm thinking it can be a loss of community because with Instagram, Snapchat, yeah, help me out. What else is out there? Every day is something new. Uh, uh, okay. Which actually, you know, yeah. I, but, but like it's interesting. Said, that's a yeah. performing aspect is where yeah. the difference comes in because yeah, you have to perform for these things. I mean, yeah. you, you know, you put on a picture and you got 20,000 filters. And, it's fake. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know. Um, yeah, Our, like your Instagram feed does not represent. It, it only rep usually it only represents your best self. So having anything that doesn't paint you in a really great light, you just won't ever present to the world. And nor do people want you to, which is the other part of it too. It's like for as much as people want to be all about being authentic, at the end of the day, I don't want to show you my dirt. You really don't want to see my dirt. Like you just want to see the Instagram version. Of it. Teenage years it came around. And I remember when Facebook started, but like, how old were you, Zach, um, um, when Facebook started? 
2004, 2004, six. You were six. So for as long as you can remember, Facebook has been around. That's, 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 I mean, and I remember it used to be for, for you know, somebody said something mean to us or mean to me, I mean, it was just <laughs> at the schoolyard. I mean, you know, nobody else knew. Now it goes viral. <laughs> No, I mean, it's it's yeah, crazy, yeah, and so yeah, yeah. the cyberbullying, I mean, it was never even a thing before. Sure. Um, yeah, so it's constantly this need to measure up. Um, now, let me, before we kind of open up, let me ask you, Tim, then you read, you read then the book was available to everybody, so everybody got it, I don't know who else read it in its entirety, but I know you said you read it. You said you uh, pretty much read it in, what, a day or two, or three? A week, maybe even. A week still, it's fast for me. How long? How long? Yeah, it's like the time that you yeah. <laughs> So tell me it's what. It's taking me a few days. So. Okay, yeah, because I know you're very fast for me. What, what did you get out of it, and, and what, yeah, what did it mean to you, and how did it maybe help you relate to even more, more so, some of the folks that are in your home that you are mentoring and guiding? I liked the book because it was a, a very honest book. It felt like you were really hearing everything, both from the success, you know, being out of home, about more house, and about cracking the bar, wow. And then <clears throat> how how that can all change with life decisions. And then shortly after, you're reading about some severe hard times. I mean, depression, um, I don't know if you consider it suicide, but it was something pretty, pretty, pretty close to that. Yeah. Where you really, and you just learned, I learned a lot about um, the scope that a, that a man's life can have. You know, moving, moving like that. And then how you um, realize what mattered in life and uh, through friendships here. Hope again, and um, by the end, you were able to uh, voice that for other people. And it's, it's once again a story of hope and um, how there is always help, there is always a way out so that you can come back to the title. So it was a, it's, a very, it's a very real book, and it's also a very hopeful book. How you can how you can overcome problems with Jesus when you make that clear. So well, thank you. And let's let's I kind of just want to open it up. I mean, what are you, what first of all, what are y'all's thoughts? Oh, like 
lost them both when I was 14. So, my idea of community growing up was horrible. I, mean, I didn't have any friends and family, so I decided to join the military. And I grew up Catholic, and the idea and sense of God and faith and evil went away. You know, because like, what he said, like, people go in and people turn into some by the place to find people because they don't say honest to themselves. That's what happened. You know, I did two tours in Afghanistan. I did what I was told to do. And that made me believe that I was invincible. Like nothing could happen. You, know? you see someone get shot, you shot someone. It's
kids know how to respect their elders and love each other. So, that's... Yeah. That's what I got. Thank you for sharing that too. listening to everybody, um, I mean, our background is so diverse. I grew up in a, a loving home, Christian family, um, but I would say I went through inwardly, like, similar to what you, you know, what you described, feeling alone or um, comparing myself to other people, and um, when I was with friends, I would put on a show of being happy and involved, and then I'd go home and just like, 